Hey guys, in this video, we'll be creating a simple and basic flying superhero controller. Right now, you're looking at a game I've been working on, which gives you an idea on what your game could look like. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the movement and the camera features. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Before we begin, you have the option to download the startup project from the GitHub link I provided in the description. If you prefer to use your own project, you can skip to this specific timestamp. Once you have the project set up, make sure you open the game scene. Let's start by setting up the scene. In my startup scene, I have the player game object with an animator, rigid body, and a capsule collider. You can copy these values if you'd like. In the player animator, I have an idle and flying animation with transition between them. First, let's download Cinemachine into our project. Go to Window, Package Manager, search for Cinemachine, and click Install. Once you've installed Cinemachine, Right click on the hierarchy, navigate to Cinemachine, machine and add a free look camera. Create an empty game object inside the player and name it camera follow. Position it near the neck area. Then drag this object to the follow and look at slots in the free look camera component. Now let's adjust the camera settings. Set the FOV to 35 and scroll down to the orbit section. For the top rig, set the height to 8 and the radius to 2. The middle rig should have the height of 0 and the radius of 5. Finally, the bottom rig. Set the height to negative 6 and the radius to 6. You can click on these tabs to preview how the camera moves in each section. To add collision detection, add the Cinemachine Collider extension. Create a layer called Ground and assign it to the floor. In the Cinemachine Collider settings, Set the Collide against the ground layer and ignore the player tab. Now that we have the scene set up, let's create the Flying Controller script on our player. Select the player and add a new component called Flying Controller. Open the script in Visual Studio, and here are the variables we'll need. A public float called Move Speed, a public float called Max Float Height, for now let's set it to 10. Another public float called Min Float Height, a public camera called Free Look Camera, a private float called Current Height, and finally, a private animator called Anim. In the start method, set current height to transform the position.y and assign Anim to get component animator. In the update method, check if the W key is pressed by using input.get key keycode W. If it's true, call a separate void to handle the character's movement. Otherwise, we'll call another void to disable the movement. After that, clamp the current height by using mathf.clamp, transform the position.y, current height, max float height. We'll update the transform the position by using a new vector 3 with transform the position.x, current height, and transform the position.z. Now let's create a private void called move character. Create a vector 3 called camera forward to store the free look camera .transform .x, the value 0, and the free look camera transform forward .z. Set the transform rotation to quaternion.look rotation, camera forward, and update it with a new vector 3, 0, transform .rotation .y, 0, using space.self. Finally, have anim.setBool is flying to true. We'll create a corresponding bool variable in the animator later on. To make the character fly, create a vector 3 called forward and set it to free look camera the transform dot forward. Then create another vector 3 called fly direction and set it to forward dot normalized. Update the current height by adding fly direction dot y times move speed times time dot delta time and assign it to a new vector 3 with transform the position dot x, current height, and transform position dot z. To stop the movement, create a private void called disable movement. Have anim.setBool is flying to false and update the transform.rotation with quaternion.euler 0, transform.rotation.eulerangles.y, and then 0. Let's go back to the top. In the start method, disable the cursor to avoid it appearing during testing with the free look in machine camera. Back in Unity, go to the animator tab and add a new bool parameter called isFlying. Set the condition for transitioning from idle to flying. As is flying true. 
and from the flying animation back to the idle, we'll have is flying set to false. Now, set the move speed to 35, the max float height to 1000, and the min float height to 1.5. We'll then drag the main camera to the free look camera slot, and before we play test, let's adjust the camera settings in the free look camera object. We'll have the Y axis inverted, while keeping the X axis uninverted, making sure that these boxes are ticked and unticked. When you press play, you'll notice that animation might seem a bit slow and awkward, but we'll address that later. Keep in mind that the animation used here is from Mixamo, so it might look better with a different animation. Other than that, the character follows the direction of the camera as intended. However, there is a minor issue where the player doesn't fully rotate to face the camera. Fortunately, it's an easy fix. First, let's adjust the animation transition. Set the transition duration from the idle to flying and from the flying to idle to 0.01 .01 instead of 0.05. This will make the transition snappier, which I prefer. Now, let's go back to the player script. At the top of the script, add a private float called xrotation. In the update method, assign the xrotation to freelookcamera.transform.rotation.eulerangles.x. In the move character function, where it says transform.rotate, replace the zero in the x axis with the xrotation. Now, when we test the game back in Unity, the player fully rotates to face the camera. Now let's move on to the optional second part of the video, camera aiming. If you're solely interested in the flying tutorial, feel free to skip this part. However, if you'd like to add a bit of aesthetic to your game, then follow along. Go to your player and create another script called camera aiming. Have the using cinemachine statement at the top. The variables we'll need are a public cinemachine free look called free look camera, a public float called zoom speed, let's just set it to five for now, a public float called start FOV, another public float called zoom out FOV, a public float called offset start, and a public float called offset end. Additionally, include a private float called target FOV and a private float called target offset. And last but not least, we'll have a private ball called is zooming out. In the start method, set target FOV to start FOV and have target offset to offset start. In the update method, set is zooming out to input.getKey decodeW. Then use the conditional operator, which is a question mark, to assign the target FOV as it follows. If is zooming out is true, set it to zoomed out FOV. Otherwise, set it to start FOV. Do the same for the target offset, setting it to offset end when zooming out is true and offset start when it's not. Next, create a float called new FOV, set it to math.lerp, freelookcamera.orbits, target FOV, time.delta time times zoom speed. Similarly, create a float called new offset and set it to the math.lerp, freelookcamera rig, composer, track object offset.x, target offset, time.delta time times zoom speed. To complete the script, assign the Cinemachine Composer component to a variable called Composer. Using freelookcamera.rig, get Cinemachine component, Cinemachine Composer. Set the Composer track object offset.x to a new offset, and set the freelookcamera orbit.radius to new FOV. In Unity, update the inspector variables for the camera aiming script, assign the freelookcamera to the corresponding slot, set zoom speed to 10, start FOV to 4, and zoomed out FOV to 6. Set the offset start to 0.45 and the offset end to 0. If you want to see where it edits in the Cinemachine settings, check the orbit section and there's a drop down menu under aim, specifically the track object offset on the X axis. In conclusion, when you press play, the camera will start off on the right but will center on the player as soon as they start flying. It will smoothly transition back and forth due to the lerping we implemented for the offset and FOV. I've added cubes to demonstrate the vertical flying, and it works perfectly. The player won't touch the ground since we set the minimum float height to 1.5, ensuring that the player stays above that value on the Y axis. You can modify it as desired. You can even set it to zero to have the player go to the ground, but I prefer having my flying character hover slightly above the ground to create the superhero effect. That concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.